Hello, I'm Mark Morano, uh, publisher of CFAX Climate Depot. And uh, the, it was in the film Climate Hustle, which came out, and Craig mentioned that earlier. And also my a book is out this year, The Politically Incorrect Guide to Climate Change. Now this book is literally an A to Z compendium, and I have a whole chapter on climate funding, and I have a whole chapter on the so-called solutions to global warming, which is sort of overlapping to that, and it gets into things like carbon taxes and uh, some of the UN spending schemes that they want to do, and we'll talk a little bit about that. But if you're interested in any kind of just reference, you know, this is the book. Um, it's essentially uh, 12 years of work went into this, and it's actually in its third printing, and it was actually sold out several times so far this year, but it's done by Regnery Books, and I highly recommend it. In fact, I would say no parent with children uh, from kindergarten through college uh, should, avoid, should not have this book. This book is critical, especially for all the stuff going from pop culture, from professors to teachers to the school books to the narrative, and again, it goes into all of this so kids can actually appreciate energy and actually learn to understand why they should value and defend it and not be afraid. As uh, Mark was just saying, you really do have to speak up for this because so many people, even on our side, when you talk about energy issues, they're kind of like, oh yeah, well, you know, solar panels are you know, making record advances and soon we won't need this. They, they see it as this benign thing and it's a very simple argument. If solar and wind really are that competitive, if there's so much money to be made in that industry, then all they have to do is, as Al Gore says, if all these entrepreneurs can make money, let them make the money, let them do it. Instead, the, the clean energy, so-called, wants to ban energy that works. And that's one of the insidious agendas of this. If you really believe in your product, if you really think it can make a lot of money, why do you have to spend all this money and issue all these regulations shutting down coal, oil, gas? That's where they fail on the argument. CFAC, we actually have in Lafayette, Louisiana, put up these uh, billboards. Russia funneled Green Group money to millions to oppose fracking and cripple American energy. Green collusion. Now, I know it was uh, Bonner, and then Mark even mentioned this about uh, that, why this is so important to Russia. Think back to the Star Wars, Ronald Reagan, when he was president in 1983. A very important point here. If you recall, Ronald Reagan went on and gave that speech and the media went nuts. Why would we want to expand the arms race into space? President uh, of Russia at the time took it very seriously. Gorbachev, uh, when he, in a few years after that, they took that pledge so seriously that they went to all the summits and tried to get that pledge out of Ronald Reagan because they knew that they could not afford it. Their economy could not afford it. And right now, with Donald Trump's energy policy, essentially the Russian economy can't afford it. With the United States becoming a, an energy powerhouse and deregulating, this is the worst thing that could ever happen. And also, don't think for a moment that uh, the environmentalists are taking this money blindly. I think it was Bonner who said, you know, they don't want to know the answer. Well, they know, the, I think they know the answer. James O'Keefe did the hidden uh, camera video uh, at the LA eateries with people like Ed Bagley Jr. and a couple, and uh, the Josh, uh, Josh, what's his name from the, from the fracking film, yes. And they actually, in their, he posed as the you know, Middle Eastern uh, oil sheik, essentially trying to shut down fracking and wanting to give money to the Hollywood left environmental community and they were completely fine with it, waiting for the check. I wouldn't be surprised if the Russian collusion extended into Hollywood given what easy marks they would be and the power that they have through the, the mass medium. So I'm here today to talk a little bit about the climate funding. The, as, uh, as Craig said, this is the a very brief version. Uh, in 2007, actually I was working for the Senate Environment and Public Works Committee, uh, actually under Senator James Inhofe at the time. By the way, one of the greatest answers ever on funding. If you want to turn the narrative around, they used to ask you enough, how much money do you get? The media, and they'd chase him down a hall, and his answer was, not enough when you look at how much the other side gets. And it would shut the reporters down every time, because they always expect Republicans to run scared of any of those kind of questions. Uh, I think I really do think Senator Inhofe of Oklahoma paved the way for Donald Trump because he took 
the media on on this issue. I remember there was a point where the acting EPA director, uh, Andrew Wheeler now, came into my office and said, this is not going well, this whole campaign, because we were writing out, we were doing hour-long speeches of Inhofe on climate. He said, the media is after Inhofe every day. They're attacking him. And I'm like, yes, that means it's working. It's exactly the way it's supposed to go. And that's why Trump's presidency is going exactly the way it should, particularly on climate and energy. Uh, because of the media attacks, you know, as long as he's got those people attacking him, everything's going well. 2007, this was a huge report. The Union of Concerned Scientists claimed ExxonMobil had given almost $16 million over seven years to so-called climate denier groups. This was done by Ann Thompson, NBC News. This prompted letters from Senator Whitehouse and I was Dianne Feinstein, a couple other United States senators, demanding that Exxon reveal their funding to these groups. But, the, but what had happened was a few years before that, ExxonMobil had given a $100 million grant to Stanford University, as reported in the New York Times, to research ways to meet the growing energy needs without worsening global warming. So here was ExxonMobil, $100 million in one swoop versus allegedly money over seven years to denier groups. And by the way, back to the denier group. An analysis at the time, one United States Department of Agriculture farm grant to study how farm odors contribute to global warming of $20 million exceeded all the money ExxonMobil had been accused of giving at the time. Uh, Michael Bloomberg, former mayor of New York, has gotten heavily involved in this campaign. Uh, his Beyond Coal campaign, $64 million through the Sierra Club. Uh, as Power of the Future notes, and Daniel was supposed to be one of the speakers here, Bloomberg's green activism leaves wreckage, economic wreckage behind as he pats himself on the back with all of his act activists. Uh, and interestingly enough, this is part of the green agenda. In the book, I detail how climate activists who go to the UN conferences call for planned recessions to fight global warming, call for CO2 budgets for every man, woman, and child on the planet. So the idea of leaving behind economic wreckage, unemployment, to them, that's part of saving the earth. 2016 election cycle, we hear about Tom Steyer, uh, we hear about, and, the, and the, Co the Koch brothers. We're told the Koch brothers are the most evil, well-funded, dominant force. This was the most recent election cycle that's available, Open Secrets, a liberal organization, I might add, only gave $11.2 million. It, they came in at 38th ranked in terms of donations for the midterm elections. The San Francisco activist and billionaire Tom Steyer came in at number nine on the list. George Soros group ranked tw uh, 14th with 26 million, and a group called Environmental America ranked well ahead of Koch with 11.7 .7 million in contributions. This idea of the lavish funded narrative isn't now sitting well with some of the, on the environmental left. This is Randy Olson, he did the film Sizzle. Uh, there's so much money in the climate community, the gargantuan sums of money over a billion dollars as of 2011 poured in. It isn't right for the environmental left to be crying poor that somehow Exxon outspends them. That's a myth. In the book, I feature Michael Schellenberger, who was actually named Time Magazine's one of the greatest environmentalists about 10 years ago. He's come out now and said the whole Exxon new myth old Exxon knew uh, claims was a myth, that Exxon, if they gave money, was not going to so-called denier groups and was going to other corporate groups so that corporations could appear green. So even now, key figures on the left are rebuking the left. Office of Management and Budget, some of the recent studies, 1993 to 2014, federal expenditures on climate exceeded $166 billion in 2012 dollars. And this is, this is according to capital research money. This is huge money. Al Gore alone pledged to spend $300 million uh, back in 2007, 2008 to do his climate campaign when he was doing the live earth. Uh, Tom Steyer pledged $100 million in this, in this coming election cycle. We'll see how that works out for him. He actually gave $50 million to the Democrats. It was 2014. And, and I like to say all Tom Steyer got for his $50 million was a Democrat Senate all-nighter campaign in the United States Senate. They actually pulled an all-night campaign with Senator Whitehouse showing climate charts and preaching gloom and doom. And it was funny because this was right at the time the Japanese government urged their citizens to go to bed an hour early in order to fight global warming. Because the earlier you go to bed, the less CO2 emissions you have. Well, at the same time, Democratic senators were urging everyone to stay up all night to watch this climate uh, marathon. 
And I don't think it went well. I think ultimately that the, the Japanese government sentiment won because there's no possible way you could watch Senator Whitehouse from Rhode Island hour after hour on climate and not fall asleep. So I think, although the TV may have been left on, so maybe it wasn't that good. Joe Nova, Australian researcher, uh, I think Mark referred to this earlier, 3,500 to 1, 3,500 times the money as anything offered to skeptics. This was a comprehensive analysis of U.S. only climate spending. Skeptics, it literally is the David versus Goliath, and skeptics are the Goliath. And keep in mind, they're also going after us on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube. They're active campaign. This is an insane analysis here. Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook, was named by George Soros Media Matters as Climate Misinformer of the Year in 2017. Now, I had been named previous years, and I took it as a great dishonor slash honor. But here's a guy, Mark Zuckerberg, founder of Facebook, has done everything the Greens wanted. He's paid all the lip service. He's given money. He's gone to the events. He's done all the correct things. But because he allows climate deniers, in quotes, on Facebook, they've now, the pressure on him is unbelievable. It'll be interesting to see if and when Mark Zuckerberg breaks at Facebook and starts ser much more serious censorship than we've even been contemplating now. Uh, Obama, interesting thing about Obama, this was actually Bloomberg News that reported this. So maybe Bloomberg himself, the Michael Bloomberg, doesn't have that much control over his news division. They stashed, the Obama administration stashed 70, that's their word, stashed $77 billion in climate money. And the goal was to make the programs hard to disentangle. They were afraid a Republican president was going to come in and they didn't want the money. So this is why it is so hard to disentangle this climate industrial complex that we face here. Where did some of the money go? Federal Highway Administration got the money. Department of Transportation actually did a study. How might climate change increase the risk of fatal crashes in a community, unquote. And I actually have a link to this study on my website. It's, it's insane. American Indians, oh, sorry, that's actually Native Americans. The Bureau of Indian Affairs created the Tribal Climate Resilience Program. So they're, they're going to be saved now from the effects of climate change. 18 agencies have climate-related activities, according to the congressional research. My favorite, and actually we're working on a sequel to Climate Hustle, we actually have exclusive clips from this musical. It's about the United Nations uh, uh, climate agenda. $700,000 U.S. taxpayer money went to this play on climate change. Uh, and President Trump's OMB director uh, has been, uh, Mick, uh, Mick Mulvaney has been fighting this and sparring with reporters over it. They're, they're, the Trump budget has been phenomenal in terms of proposed budget. Unfortunately, it meets a wall of resistance known as Capitol Hill slash the GOP establishment. Big Green is a $13 billion a year industry. Ron Arnold has written several books on the Big Green machine, talks all about the, the foundations. It's, they have a, over $100 billion at their disposal. Now, if you go back again, $20 million ExxonMobil, or $16 million ExxonMobil allegedly gave over seven years, and this was way back into the 1990s. This is what they have, their big claim of money, and that and the Koch brothers. Now, Gore cashed in. This was interesting. Gore showed up at the United States Senate and the House during 2007, 8, 9, 10 as a former vice president, lobby, essentially calling for cap and trade, trying to save the planet. It turns out he was an unabashed lobbyist. He, was, his, he had 14 firms that had invested directly. They received from the Obama stimulus bill two and a half billion in loans, grants, tax breaks. Al Gore was acting as a lobbyist and the media treated him as a distinguished former you know, politician who had no stake in this game. And he was there lobbying for his own wealth. And that's some of the energy grants he got. Environmental guru James Lovelock actually became a thorn now in the green side. He was actually a true believer in the climate change cause and an alarmist. He now says most of the green stuff is verging on a gigantic scam, carbon trading, huge subsidies. They don't do a darn thing about climate, but it'll make a lot of money for a lot of people. He gets it, and he's in, in uh, UK. Gore sold his current TV network, $100 million. I like to call him Al, Gore, Al, Gore, Al, Gorgera, Al Gorgera. He is now the most lavishly funded fossil fuel player in the global warming debate today. The New York Times also reported, the Sierra Club, I actually debated Michael Brune on CNN, uh, and he actually accused me of getting oil funding and skeptics of being oil funded. 
his donation from the natural gas industry of $26 million, you could get the combined annual budgets of CFACT, CEI, and Heartland, and they wouldn't even add up to the donation that the natural gas gave. That's how much money the environmental groups have. But this was, you know, I love the way the New York Times, it was an uncomfortable debate among environmental groups and that they were sleeping with the enemy. The Sierra Club took this money in secret until it was actually exposed. Another thing that happens when you get all this money in academia and these professors are getting the money, this is a fascinating case I detail in the book. This professor from University of Hawaii, he, had, uh, a, he admitted in a candid admission that his st scientific study took one month, but writing the press release to his paper took two months. And, they're trying, and the reason for that is he has to get public attention, he has to get media attention in order to get it published, in order to get more funding, in order to get more money, in order to get more staff. So when you've reached a point in climate science research where the scientists themselves are spending more time on the press release than the actual scientific study, I think we have a problem. Or as the NASA team here, Houston, we have a problem. This is very serious stuff. Just to give you a note, I know there's been a lot of praise of Trump here, and you know what? You can't give him too much on this issue particularly. Uh, his, his proposed budget was phenomenal. He was, they were talking about deep cuts to the EPA, cutting NASA's climate budget. EPA, the lowest level in 40, 40 years. Unfortunately, as I mentioned, the, it met with the Republican establishment. And this really isn't about the science. You've probably all seen these quotes before, but we will redistribute the wealth by climate policy. They want this money. The hundred uh, billion dollar climate fund that the United Nations wants to be uh, in charge of is going to go to countries that are best able to keep their citizens locked in poverty. I interviewed a South African development rights activist who just went through the whole, it went and laid it all out. The UN is handing out the money to governments that don't allow their people to develop because they're the ones living earth friendly with low uh, carbon emissions. I'm out of time, but I wanted to leave you with this because ultimately as bad as American energy our, our, uh, our cost of energy, our economic hits we're going to take. The deadly part is what's going to be happening here in the developing world. Uh, Al Gore is, of course, inspired by that. This is you know, a, a hard-hitting cartoon here. But it's in reality, Al Gore appeared in our film at a Bill Gates function actually saying that, we, that Africa is projected to have more people than China and India combined by mid-century. We need, quote, ubiquitous fertility management unquote, according to Al Gore, essentially saying there's going to be too many Africans in the world in 50 years and we need to control them. Imagine if President Trump had made a similar claim. This is what ultimately this climate agenda is about, the UN Climate Fund. All this money is going to suppress the development, make energy more expensive here, make the United States take a harder hit economically. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this with a short tutorial. If you want a full one, you can get the book uh, and it's the Politically Incorrect Guide to Climate Change. I go into great detail over a thousand footnotes so you can find out all the citations um, but this is a long battle unfortunately I'll leave on a pessimistic note I don't know that the Trump administration will get a, is getting a good handle on the funding I think we have a trillion dollar deficit coming up spending has always been including Ronald Reagan probably the hardest thing for any fiscally responsible person in Washington to get under control and as we mentioned Obama's hid a lot of this money in the government it's not easy to find and when you do find it it's not easy to get rid of so Thank you very much.